वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विशाल जाधव असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी तिलक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ पुणे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द मॉड्यूल ऑन मार्क्सिस कंसेप्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी हिस्टोरिकल एंड डायलेक्टिकल मटीरियलिज्म दिस मॉड्यूल कम्स अंडर द पेपर क्लासिकल सोशोलॉजिकल थियोरी as we all know marx was one of the founding fathers of sociology who in the 19th century gave a theory of understanding human society and development of human society this theory was rooted in the economic understanding of how human society changed from one phase to another phase what were the necessary social conditions that led to these changes why was the mode and means of production so important in the change and transformation of society from time to time in human history karl marx was greatly influenced by the writings of hegel especially his writings on the philosophy of history karl marx believed that hegel had found a general historical law called the dialectic but attempted to make it materialist by explaining the historical processes in economics rather than metaphysical terms and applying its classes rather than nations he thus tried to explain history in terms of social struggle between classes instead of the struggle between nations as hegel had done karl marx envisages history as a class struggle with material production at the center his historical interpretation of history is based on the various material economic and social conditions that humans initiated and indulged in themselves he took the various eras of development in european history and attributed them all to developing societies that have emerged in the world karl marx divides these different eras of development into phases or societies he divides the first phase into three different societies these are the primitive communist society slave society and the feudal society the second phase takes on the capitalist society alone and in the future phase he brings in socialism and communism in this module we shall consider karl marx's interpretation of history as a strife between opposing forces which for him was at its peak in the capitalist society for him it is this strife that takes history from one stage of development to another with production and means of production at the center however marx was greatly influenced by philosophy of hegel and feuerbach the role of hegel and feuerbach on marx's thought hegel is one of those philosophers who hold reason in high esteem reason for hegel reigns supreme karl marx initially adhered to hegel's thought but later on abandoned it though not all of it in hegel's view the history of the world developed on rational grounds on such grounds he claims that reason is the sovereign of the world reality for him is what he calls the absolute idea hegel centers his thoughts on the notion of spirit or the mind he makes it very clear that in order to grasp being one must grasp thought hegel uses a dialectical process in establishing a rational world history where he says that the dialectics of historical processes consists in the opposition between states and the states are always in conflict since each wants to gain freedom which is one of the end of the absolute idea the dialectical processes established moves from thesis to antithesis and amalgamates to synthesis in marx's historical processes we will soon discover that though he laid down hegel's views he borrowed something from his dialectics feuerbach on the other hand rejected hegel's idealism substituting it with the view that the basic reality is material 
For Feuerbach, history is the progress towards self-consciousness, but not as Hegel had assumed. Towards the self-consciousness of God, but towards the self-consciousness of the finite human being of flesh and blood. Feuerbach notes also that it is man's task to realize himself within the confines of nature. Apart from personal ideas, Feuerbach's materialism was greatly influenced by the people of his time who were fading up with idealism. According to this, idealism did not take human conditions into consideration. It is from this background that Marx shifted from Hegel's position to that of Feuerbach's. He inherited from Feuerbach the inversion of the dialectic from idealism into materialism. He also accepted Feuerbach's idea that man finds his essence in the community. The starting point for Karl Marx was not idealism but materialism. For it is only materialism that is capable of comprehending the process of world history. From the Marxist materialist conception of history was born the idea of material historicism. From this point of view one can say that Karl Marx thought was greatly influenced by Hegelian dialectics and Feuerbach's materialism. Marx's approach to history. Materialism according to Karl Marx is the sum total of the natural environment and this includes all of inorganic nature, the organic world, social life and human consciousness. He regards the things in our heads as images of the real things instead of regarding the real things as images of this or that stage of development of an absolute concept. From the dialectic which he borrowed from Hegel, he is particularly interested in the part which refers to human history as conditioned by humans material economic needs. What Karl Marx calls materialist conception of history is usually known as the economic interpretation of history or economic determinism. Karl Marx posits that the main motive of explaining the whole of human behavior and therefore of history is economic. Production is supreme in Marx's materialist conception of history. Man according to him can only fully realize himself when he is able to produce his or her material needs. Social changes and political revolutions are not to be realized in ideas but in concrete production and dynamisms that accrue in the modes of production and social exchange. The act and the processes of production lie at the center of Marx's accounts of history. Man's concrete activity is the birthplace of history and world history is essentially the history of production. In his materialist interpretation of history, Karl Marx sees class struggle as a fact which is unavoidable. He says that the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggle. This is because classes arise out of economic life of society where there is constant strife between the oppressed and the oppressors. Karl Marx further admits that what is called world history is nothing but the creation of man himself by human labor. The primitive communist society and development of private property or the first stage. Karl Marx posits that the earliest mode of production, the one within which humans emerged from the animal world, endured for most of humans history and is still today extant in several primitive societies. He states, the first form of property is tribal property which corresponds to an underdeveloped stage of production in which people live by hunting and fishing, by cattle breeding and at the highest stage agriculture. Under primitive communism, the simplest tools and weapons possessed were communally owned and products were shared between members of the group. In this society, the actual concept of ownership was foreign. The land was just there to be used and animals there to be captured. The relations of production prevailing within this kind of society were not conducive to rapid technological development or brilliant scientific inventions. According to Karl Marx, division of labor at this stage was still very elementary and was confined to a further extension of the natural division of labor existing in family. This was between men 
and women. Men were hunting and fishing and the women were gathering food or attending camp at home. There was some level of development though very slow. Although there was common ownership of resources, the aspect of private property was gradually encroaching into society. It resulted from the point of view that some people got involved in cattle rearing, others in handicrafts and some in architecture. Karl Marx and his great friend Angel shared a common view that as people started exchanging the products, their relationships towards one another changed. As time went on, Cattle came to be considered as belonging to the cattle breeder, the land to the farmer, and the tools to the handicrafts. The second stage of the slave society, the second main thing in the past phase of Karl Marx's account on history is slavery. Karl Marx holds that instead of tribes killing war captives or freeing them, they decided to force them to work. Slavery in this epoch was a unique form of exploitation. The exploited class did not only own the tools and means of production. The producer himself was considered to be the private property of the owner. Slavery as considered by Karl Marx was a dominant feature of the classical antiquity. Society in this period was divided into classes, patrician and plebeian, freemen and slaves. Thus, there began the history of class antagonism or class struggle, which was henceforth to be the fundamental feature of human history according to him. The feudal society. The ancient world gave way to feudalism with its relationship between lord, serf and between guildsmen and journeymen. The history of feudalism. Feudalism began around the Middle Ages where populations were scattered over a large area. During the last centuries of the declining Roman Empire and its conquest by barbarians, a considerable part of the productive forest was destroyed. Agriculture declined, industries decayed for want of market, trade died out and was being violently interrupted. The feudal period as Karl Marx maintains was just as much as the ancient communal property and association against a subjugated producing class, but the form of association and relation to the direct producers were different because of the different conditions of production. He added that the feudal structure of land ownership had its counterpart in the towns in the shape of corporate property. Here property consisted chiefly in labor of each individual. The main features of feudal society. The key features of this period were serf labor, landed property and personal labor. According to Karl Marx, property during the feudal epoch consisted on the one hand of landed property with serf labor chained to it and on the other of personal labor. During this period, there were some persons or individuals who owned land and were called landlords and they were staying in the cities. The land was distributed to peasants called serfs who tilled it and the land, owner, and the land owners only appeared to take their shares of crop produce. Class division was only between princes, nobility, clergy, peasants and masters, journeymen, apprentices and also casual laborers in the town. The feudal period due to the emergence of the industrial revolution gave way to capitalism. This was because a great part of the peasant population, that is the serfs, was moving to towns to seek jobs for the newly created industries. The capitalist society. Within capitalism, we are introduced to the present phase, the era in which Karl Marx lived. It introduces to the economic, political and social situation of his time. Marx lived at a time when capitalism had just emerged as a result of industrial revolution. He examined the social structure and was able to come out with a picture of what he thought it was all about. Capitalism is a mode of economic production or an economic system characterized by the fact that the instruments of production such as land, factories, raw materials are controlled to a greater or lesser extent by the private individuals or groups. Marx believed that the capitalist society in which he was living had reached a state of crisis. The main characteristics of capitalist society. One of the aspects of capitalism is that 
the mode of production in which labor power is a commodity is controlled by the ruling class. Stemming from this, Marx says, people's ability to work is purchased on the market by the capitalist who owns the means of production and employs the worker to use them. With this, Angel supports Karl Marx by saying that the capitalist exploitation consists of the fact that the value of the worker's wage is less than the value of the product he creates. The social superstructure is divided into three classes, the capitalist, the middle class and the working class. From the exploitation of the proletariat by the bourgeoisie, Marx posits the aspects of personal interest and class interest. He holds that in the capitalist society there are some people who concentrate more on their personal wealth rather than on the interest of others. A number of these people come together to form a class with the idea to make more profit. This class begins to determine the wages of those who are working for them. These capitalists have a common interest in opposing excessive wage increase but are in support of all measures which increases mass of profit. Apart from this, Karl Marx adds that class interest is the primary motive force of history, especially the class interest between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat as the great leveler of modern social change. When these aspects portray themselves so much, the worker at the end of the day becomes alienated from his produce. The Collapse of Capitalism Karl Marx believed that the capitalist society in which he lived had reached a state of crisis. The crisis which capitalism had reached was not a contingent fact of history. It was something entailed by the nature of capitalism itself. The capitalists, due to competition and overproduction, faced a crisis. As a result of this crisis and the pressure mounted by the proletariat on the bourgeoisie, the system collapses through revolution. It is good to notice here that capitalism is significantly not simply as one more stage in the endless movements of human history, but as that stage before the last. The reason is that under a capitalist system, the whole conflict has now been simplified into two classes. Karl Marx maintains that capitalism will fall and give rise to socialism and ultimately communism. The socialist state. Socialism is an attempt to reconstruct society on the basis of the common ownership of the means of production. Such a reconstruction was undertaken in reaction to individualism and capitalism on the thesis that these movements lead to exploitation of the proletariat by the owners of the means of production of the bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie Socialism In the capitalist society, there is a section of the bourgeoisie who are desirous of redressing social grievances in order to secure the continued existence of bourgeoisie society. This kind of socialism, the socialist bourgeoisie wants all advantages of modern social conditions. They wish for a bourgeois without proletariat. For Karl Marx, such a class of bourgeoisie naturally conceives the world in which he is supreme to be the best. Furthermore, this class of bourgeoisie will say that the proletariat should remain between the bonds of present society, casting away all hateful ideas concerning the bourgeoisie. Moreover, they advocate that free trade is for the benefit of the working class, prison reforms for the benefit of the working class, protective duties for the benefit of the working class. This class holds that the bourgeois is a bourgeois for the benefit of the working class. Karl Marx also holds that according to this class of bourgeoisie, all they do is to aid the proletariat in their misery. Proletariat Socialism Since the proletariat is considered as useful only at the level of production, this leaves him with a sense of misery for the moment of leisure as he has no place in the eyes of the bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie determines his wages and even his social condition. This pushes the proletariat to advocate for reform. In the first place, the proletariat will reject all political and especially revolutionary action. They will wish to achieve the goals by peaceful means. The bone of contention for proletarians stems from the fact that they want a society 
where there will be freedom and equality for all, where the means of production will be totally under the state. With this future reform, Karl Marx remarks, the socialist state after its formation will be only as a temporary stage of evolution of ultimate society. The socialists have to bear in mind that a social movement cannot subordinate means to ends and cannot manipulate and deceive in order to achieve success. A socialist revolution in the shift of control over the processes of production from the minority of capitalist managers and bureaucrats to the producers themselves. Such a move makes possible the breakdown of hierarchical divisions of labor and the antagonistic relationships among groups of workers in a stratification system. That is why Karl Marx shows hatred to the philanthropists who want to improve things within the present system of capitalism. Finally, the proletariat socialism takes us closer to the end of history, which is communism for Marx. Socialism for Karl Marx is just a period of reform, recovery and preparation for communism. The communist society, wherein communism is a stage following socialism, communism for Marx is the positive transcendence of private property as human self-estrangement. It is the complete return of man to himself as a human being. Communism is the end of history for Marx. He holds that during the communist regime, the history of class struggle will come to an end and the proletariat will take over power. The key here is that the proletariat wants to eliminate its private property and to promote equality and freedom and finally lead them into a period of classlessness. Before proletariats achieve their aim, there has to be the transitional period of socialism. The transitional period. Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto says that of all classes that stand face to face with the bourgeois today, the proletariat alone is a really revolutionary class. The first step of this revolutionary class is to raise the proletariat to the position of the ruling class to win the battle of democracy. They will have to make sure that all instruments of production are centralized in the hands of the state. As everything will be centralized in the hands of the state, Karl Marx maintains that between the capitalist and the communist period lies the period of transformation of one into another. He further holds that this period corresponds to the revolutionary dictatorship of proletariat. It will not last long for it will not be the perfect communist ideal. It can be observed that the new society issuing from capitalism is not yet stable for it has not come up on its own the transitional stage will be marked by profound changes affecting property and religion. From this he says classless society should emerge. Emergence of the classless society. Karl Marx regards the fall of capitalism and the victory of the proletariat as inevitable. He also notes that the dictatorship of proletariat and its development into classless society is inevitable. Marx points out that the fall of capitalism leads to the rise of classless society and he maintains that there will be no need for force since every member of society will conceive of himself or herself not only as a member of society and will quite be incapable of pursuing individual ends as distinct from collective purpose. The elimination of private property and the end of history. According to Marx, the distinguishing feature of communism is not the abolition of property generally, but the abolition of bourgeois property. Furthermore, he says, we communists have been reproached with the desire of abolishing the rights of personally acquiring property as the groundwork of all personal freedom, activity and independence. When the elimination of private property is mentioned, it means the social character of it has changed for it loses its class character. When society has reached this level with the abolition of property, which is called by the bourgeois the abolition of individuality and freedom, society will become stable and everything will be communally owned. At this level there will be no exploitation and all will be free and equal 
ownership of private property will not be for exploitation but for the good of humans when society reaches this phase humans would have completely socialized and will be incapable of any action other than social action so to finally conclude we have seen how the materialist perspective of marx enables us to understand how human history moved through various phases from savagery and barbarism to primitive communism to feudalism to capitalism and finally he believes that we'll move into a phase of socialism at some point of time because there are inherent problems in capitalism itself which will lead to its own destruction the mode and means of production play a very important role and so does the dialectics of how the economy interacts with all other social institutions of society all these are all dynamic and interactive with each other producing constant change and constant conflict